crisis meetings yesterday and Latrell Mitchell apparently has pledged his absolute support to the club, says he is all in. Michael Chamis is joining us here on Friday the 8th to address a very rare, serious topic. Um, you're out there yesterday, you've written all the fallout from the meetings, etc. around Latrell Mitchell and the coach apparently has a week to save his job. Firstly, Tom, I don't know what I'm doing on here. This uh, show, I'm too serious for this show, hearing about the gingerhead shearlers and whatnot uh, Joey's <laughs> referring to. But anyway, we'll get on to a serious topic. The Rabbitohs are falling and yeah. it's, been a, it's been a big week. And as you said, the coach now has... He hasn't got 80 minutes to save his job, but he's got 80 minutes to convince the club that he will be worth you know, investing in over the next few weeks. Now, we know that they play the Sharks this week. They're, they're undermanned, so are the Sharks, though. And... I don't think it's a matter of win, or win, he survives, lose, he goes. They just need to see something. They need some, something from the players that Jason Demetrio is the guy they believe in. And that performance against the Warriors on the weekend has left the club wondering whether or not the players are playing for him. How long is Jason's contract for at the moment? He's contracted until the end of 2026. He signed an extension last year, Freddie. But that doesn't mean anything because there's a nine-month termination payout. I think it's around $350,000. So... There's a lot of money at that club between Packer, between yeah. Crow, between Mike Cannonbrooks, all the owners. If they needed to get rid of Jason Demetrio, money won't be the issue. It's just whether or not they want to pull the trigger on the season and abandon things when there's a glimmer of hope that they can turn things around. Can I ask, how is Luttrell's mental state? Because it feels like for the last month, every night or every day on various um, rugby league shows, he's the, the talk. Yeah. I is he feeling the pressure? I think he's rattled, rattled, Joey. I think he spoke, I spoke to a lot of people yesterday. I think he's rattled. Uh, he had his, his advisors, Matt Rose and his manager, Warwick Wright, come and see him on Monday night. And they told him, if you want to quit, if you want to walk away, we've got your back. Walk away. Don't do this for anyone else. Don't play because your family want to play, want you to play, or you're doing it for someone. If you've had enough, if this is too much for you, then walk away and we've got your back. Okay. But he told yeah, them he wants to play. I want to ask you, you you've been forthright uh, in talking about when you accept the big money at a club, and you've talked a lot about Caelan Ponga, he's the leader of the club, highest paid player, you have to set the standard. You're, you're the benchmark of the club. Luttrell is the highest paid player at South? Yeah. It's not happening. That, that's not... That, Luttrell Mitchell doesn't do... Um, doesn't, doesn't act or even play in a manner that seems to set the standard at that club. Is since, that a fair comment? Since probably middle of last year, they were leading after... Mid-year, 11 and five of their last And the troll was on fire. I remember that game when he threw uh, Josh Addo car off us against the Bulldogs where he just absolutely destroyed him. But since then, for some reason, the troll's form's gone down and, you know, South Sydney has gone with it. Does any, anyone have a reason why this has happened mid-year last year? Because since then, it just looks like his mind is elsewhere. Yeah, and I think it's a combination of everything that's going on at South Sydney. The with pressure, the do you think stuff? That the that pressure involved, yeah. Yeah, the pressure, the pressure is huge. And I don't think, the point you made earlier about his mental well-being and the frame of mind, I don't think he's in a good space and I don't think he's handled it the way he needs mm. to handle it. I think Latrell has taken all the criticism and it's become, okay, stuff you, stuff you, stuff you. And it's, it's all blown up in this situation now where he's angry. He looks angry well, on the He was field. angry on the week. He, he looks frustrated. Yeah. And the interview on Triple M a couple of weeks ago, his reaction to that, it speaks to a guy who's just frustrated and he's not dealing with the situation very well. The way he deals with it is to act out, is to rebel. And that was raised with him the other day with South Sydney, with his management, and saying, you don't need to be this guy. Why do you have to try like and be a tough guy? Well, I think it is. It's a, it's a way of a, a cry for help. And I feel for him because some of this is his own doing. Like, you can't excuse that tackle on well, the that hit on the weekend, what he said after the interview. Yeah. But he's a guy crying out for help. And I just don't know if he's handling this the right way. Well, it started this year after Las Vegas. That's where it really... You know, they got amplified. beat over there and it got yeah, really amplified from there because, you know, and he's, he's, you know, he's been held out there as one of the Indigenous leaders and that, that takes a lot, I'm sure, of your energy, um, you know, because you're constantly watching, you know, things the way they're played out, you know, in life that's and, a role in, he's and embraced, in the media. Brad. What's that? That's a role he's embraced. Yeah, yeah but, I, but I'm thinking his understanding has come with... It comes a lot of energy. It takes a lot no, of energy, especially 100%. then. I can ask you. And this. then Chuck Mundine, and then there was a dispute with those blokes, and you know I think that's what happens when you start, you know, delving into social media and all that sort of stuff and playing a bit of your life out in 
on the social platforms is so, it takes a lot of your life. Is Sorry, he on I, social media? Literally? Yeah, he's, he's, he's on social media, yeah. Is he on there? Is he prolific yeah, he, on there, he, he, on there he, all he's the time? active on there. I, I think Freddie makes a point, though. In, because in that, I, I'd imagine on that he's getting... Yeah, and I isn't. think he's learned to, to shut things okay. off, but it's still there. Mate, you, still don't, there. you don't learn this quick, is this? No. Mate, it is poison. But one of the things the club discussed with him yesterday is to try to recalibrate his priorities. That's, is that, that's is the that thing. a fair that's assessment? The, thing. I, the whole notion of shut up and play is not something that Latrell Mitchell is going to entertain because he believes that what he's been doing throughout his career, fighting for the social injustice of his people, is something that he will, is willing to stick his neck out mm -hmm. and cop the bullets for. But where the issue is now, and Souths have stood by him for, through all that, but the issue now for Souths is, OK, we stood by you, but it's now becoming at the expense of our club. Mm. Now, we invest heavily, a million dollars a season, into you, and we're not telling you not to believe or to fight for what you believe in. But we need you to narrow your focus right now. Right now. The club is in crisis. Mm. We need our number one player to be all in on, right, on, on being the best person for this football club. Doesn't mean you need to shut up and play. Mm. But as I said today in the Sydney Morning Herald, it's time for him to play and shut people up. That's, that's what South Sydney want him to do, not at the farm or anything else. Just play football, get over there and, and get his teammates believing in him again. Mate, at the, the end of the day, the best football, if he's playing his best football, he has a bigger influence over everything else that happens in his life. Mm. The people around him need to explain that, that he doesn't have to touch his social media or anything. People understand his position, um, you know, um, with, the, with the Indigenous uh, fight. And the more and the better he plays football, then the better his message is always going to be. So the people around him just need to tell him to, yeah, forget it all and go and play good footy because that's what we need you to do. The, uh, the talks yesterday, was there any football talk about Luttrell going back to centre? Oh, that, Has look, that he had a, a separate meeting with Jason Demetrio. Now, from my understanding, Latrell said, wherever you need me to play, I'll play. Okay. Uh, I, it's going to depend on how Jai, Grant, Jai Gray goes over yeah. the next few weeks while Latrell's out. I wouldn't be surprised if that's an option. If the kid kills it, like he's, obviously there's not Jai much of it. Jai is, Gray, yeah. if he kills it, oh, he's going to leave grade. Demetrio with it's a, a situation grade. where he has to probably pick him. Grade, but I'm just saying, he's, he looks ready to go. Just, just the, 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 full, the fallback thing's interesting because the, the best teams in the comp now have that fullback that is the energizer of the team. Yeah. Um, Tedesco, Edwards, Trebojevic, Walsh. He doesn't play fullback like that. Kalen. Kalen. Yeah, but there was a time there before he got injured and they were getting to semi-finals and grand finals on the back of him playing the way he plays. So everyone's different. You know, when Latrell at his best, he's not gonna do what Tom Trebojevic mm -hmm. does or Turb uh, or Reese Walsh or any of them, but he finds a way to win. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. So. He can play fullback and not have 40 touches and, you know, still get South home. That's, but the thing is, it's the winning. Mm -hmm. you know, he needs to find a way to win. You've, you've, of all of us here, you've spent more time with him than anyone. Mm. Like, he's not a bad person, is he? Like, the attacks he's that he's guy. getting, he, yeah. he's a good guy. But where do you think he lets himself down in regards to this, the stigma that's attached to him from, from the public? I think his life's just so, a lot more complicated than ours. You know, he's part of a real push for his people and, you know, he's... They're trying to make, they're making a huge change at the moment and... Is that a bad thing though? Or is it that saying, is it a distraction? No, but it's what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is it it's a lot harder pressure. than you think. Yeah. The energy is huge. And if you're sitting there, and I watch him after the game, like go to his phone and, you know, like if you're sitting there, you know, thinking about what people are saying about you and what you're going to be saying out to the public instead of how am I going to, just going to play good footy, it is a huge difference. Like mm. the best players, all they're thinking about is how am I going to play footy? They're not thinking about anything else. Michael, it feels at this stage there is an inevitability that Wayne Bennett's going to be back at Souths. <laughs> is, is that a fair comment? I, th I think that's what it's looking most likely at this point, yeah. Look, uh, South Sydney are all in on Jason Demetrio making it work. And if it doesn't work, my understanding, Jay, uh, Wayne Bennett wants to come back to South Sydney. And Wayne wants to come back? Yeah. I think, Wayne will, I think if the job became available, Wayne Bennett will put his hand up for it. Now, who knows what else happens between... Now, on the next coaching uh, availability, there may be other av availabilities in the NRL that Wayne might put his hand up for. But if this happens at South Sydney with Jason Demetrio and the wheels fall off and they move him on, you can guarantee he'll be in prime position to take over that job. Now, right. he, to be fair, he shouldn't have left that job. Like, they signed him for three years. They made two prelims, a grand final. They were getting to a point where they were challenging for a premiership. But the way they did the deal with Demetrio to take over as a caretaker, if you look back, it was probably the wrong decision. Well, they've done the same with the Dolphins. They're doing... Yeah. They've got a very similar position. And you, they're sitting on top at the moment. Okay, would you <laughs> say, 
Would you say next year it's a total rebuild for South? Would you think it is? No, not if you got all the guns firing. You know, the, he's dropped Damien Cook. Remember, it's not just Latrell. You know, there's a lot of players across the board. Apart from Cam Murray, um, I reckon Keon's having a real good crack. There's most really a few others having a real good crack as well that most really don't stand out as much. Mate, they're all making errors at awful times of the games. They're all missing tackles. They're all lazy. They're half yards poor. So it's not Latrell. You know, a lot of it's been dumped on it's just been Latrell and just Cody. The whole team is playing poor. Up until the weekend. Let's Mate, you watch, if you play. watched on a high shot they're missing, how they how they move forwards. off the ball. What does that say, though, about what's happening at the club, Brad? Business stuff you've studied. Well, that's what I'm saying why Cam Murray and the coach need to... If, that's, if they're the coach and the captain, they need to set the standards. They need to... You know, this is how our team needs to look. And if you don't do this, then they need to tell them. Well, they're missing forwards. We can see that they're missing forwards. Tom Burgess is retiring at the end of the year, is that correct? Yeah, he's going back to England. Going back to England. Uh, Damien Cook's been, been dropped this week. Damien Cook is obviously coming to the end. I see it that they'll have to have some sort of rebuild. And would Wayne want to be a part of a rebuild? Well, they've got Cody until 2025. Latrell's got a long-term deal. Mm. And Cookie's 2025. Cameron Murray's long-term. Yeah, but I'm, Cam, I'm, not talking about, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about forwards. You yeah, know but, what it's like. You can't... Yeah. Yeah. Bennett, Bennett brings players with him. What's that? People come to a club to play with Bennett. But what front rowers are on the market? Well, I don't know. Oh, but he's never one had one a problem right. recruiting yeah, yeah, talent. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, they've gone and invested in Jack White, who they felt they need from a senior leadership point of view. But it's, it's a lot of money for four years in, in a centre as well. Is that, as you're saying, they need it's, it's, some middles. So. Well, last year I thought they needed middles. Yeah. And they've gone and bought Jack. J Jack's been Great a champion player. about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe but Jack's got to move into the pack. Um, could, could, you see, back to work. could you see Jack playing back? Back row, for yeah. sure. Be cool, yeah. He's aggressive yeah. enough, isn't Mate. he? Well, I've played him in origin at back row. Have you? Yeah. He loves it. He always trained as a back, like a, okay. a spare back row centre. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And, of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Ain. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.